This is part seven in our series of lectures on the principle of mathematical induction. And in this lecture, we're going to talk about the generalized principle of mathematical induction, and we'll do an example of it. Some sets S have the property that they don't consist of all natural numbers, but they consist of all natural numbers bigger than a particular natural number. For example, all natural numbers from five on up. The generalized principle of mathematical induction gives us a technique for predicting uh, when a set S has that property. So, in order to state it, we fix a particular natural number K, and we, say that we assume that S is a subset of the natural numbers having these two properties. One is that K lies in S, and two is that for every natural number N, if n is more than k, or bigger than or equal to k, and in s, then n plus 1 is also in s. Then the conclusion is that s contains all natural numbers greater than or equal to k. So here's an example of such a thing. We want to write a proof that for all natural numbers bigger than or equal to 2, the square root of n is smaller than this sum here. So notice that this result is false if n is equal to 1, uh, because if n is 1, the left-hand side is 1, and the right-hand side actually has only one term in it, and it's 1 over root 1, which is 1, and 1 is certainly not strictly less than 1. So it's false if n is equal to 1, um, but the claim is, or the, the task for you is to prove that it's true for all natural numbers from 2 on up. And so that's ideally set up uh, to be proved using the generalized um, principle of mathematical induction. Now, I don't mean to imply that induction is the only way to do this. Actually, if you look at this, it does seem rather obvious that it's true if you look at it in the right way. Look at the right-hand side, and you'll notice that as you move farther and farther into the sum, the terms seem to get smaller and smaller. The very smallest term is the very last one, 1 over root n, and there are n such terms. So this sum here is certainly bigger than if we replaced every single one of the terms by the very last one. In which case, the sum of all of the terms in which they're all replaced by 1 over root n is n times 1 over root n, and that's the same as root n, which is the left-hand side. Okay, so if you look at it in that way, actually the result is kind of obvious. But anyway, let's just treat it as an exercise in which we'll do it using the generalized principle of mathematical induction. So see if you can at least write the beginning of such a proof. Um, now, just as in the case of the principle of mathematical induction, one can either view it as a statement in which you try to prove that a certain set S um, has a certain property, namely, it's that, or you can view it as a sequence of open sentences um, which you wish to be proven to be true. So, see if you can write the beginning of the proof, and uh, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to phrase it in terms of open sentences. So, see if you can do the same. Okay, so here's the beginning of the proof. For each n in the natural numbers, let p of n be this open sentence. We're going to use generalized principle of mathematical induction to show that p of n is true for all n from 2 on up. So here's the basis step. The basis step is to show that p of 2 is true. In other words, to show that root 2 is smaller than 1 over root 1 plus 1 over root 2. Now, there are various ways you can do that. Uh, for one, you can just simply take out your calculator and work out this number, and work out this number, and you can verify directly that the number on the right is bigger than the one on the left. Um, this number is roughly 1.4, which means it's less than 1.5. Um, 
And um, so if I could convince you that 1 over root 2 is more than a half, uh, well, then I would have this case. So the way I argue that is I say root 2 is smaller than 2, and therefore 1 over root 2 is bigger than a half. And so that gives it to me. The right-hand side, 1 plus 1 over root 2, is bigger than 1 plus a half, uh, 1.5, which is bigger than root 2, because root 2 is of the order of 1.4. So that shows that P of 2 is true. So next we pass to the inductive step. And the inductive step means we have to show that if we assume this is true, then we can deduce that P of n plus 1 is true, which is to say that if you add up all of these terms plus one additional term, 1 over root n plus 1, then that's bigger than root n plus 1. So let me do a little calculation to explain to you how I figured out uh, how to write the proof of such a thing. So here's your task in um, carrying out the inductive step. You have to show that if p of n is true, in other words, you have to show that if you assume that this is true, then you can deduce that this is true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the right-hand side and um, I'm going to play around with that a little bit. So if we take the right-hand side, 1 over root 1 plus all the way to 1 over root n plus 1 over root n plus 1, we do know that that's bigger than root n plus 1 over root n plus 1. That's the inductive hypothesis that this quantity is bigger than root n. Okay, so if I were able to show, if I were able to prove, so this is a question mark, if I were able to prove that that was bigger than root n plus 1, then I would be done. So now let's look at this expression here, and let's rewrite that as root n plus 1 minus root n um, smaller than 1 over root n plus 1. So that's a question. If I could prove that, then I would have this one, and I would be done. So uh, your ability to handle things like this sometimes comes down to your ability to come up with a different way of algebraically writing an expression. Can you view this in a slightly different way? And what occurs to me is the formula for difference of two squares. If you write if you uh, calculate root n plus 1 minus root n, and you multiply by root n plus 1 plus root n, you have the difference of two squares formula, which says that it's equal to this squared minus this squared, and that's just equal to n plus 1 minus n, which is 1. So this product on the left is equal to 1, and that means that uh, root n plus 1 minus root n can be rewritten as 1 over root n plus 1 plus n. So you see, remember I said your ability to handle this means that you can view this in more than one way. So I, I, I can also write it like that. Now you see that, and I'm, remember, I'm trying to prove that this is smaller than uh, 1 over root n plus 1. Well, that's kind of obvious now when you look at it in this way, because you've got a sum of two terms, and that is surely smaller than if I only wrote the first of those two terms, because now I'm dividing by less, so the result comes out a little bit bigger. So there you have the result. And so that tells me exactly how to proceed. So I'm going to use those ideas when I write up my um, inductive step of the proof. So let's now return to the proof. Okay, so here's the proof of the inductive step. We let n be a natural number. We suppose that n is bigger than or equal to 2, and p of n is true. We must show that p of n plus 1 is true. So before I do that, 
I'm going to look at the calculation that I just did. So let us first note that from the difference of two squares formula, we have this is equal to the difference of the two squares, which is 1. And thus, this can be written in this way, and this is clearly smaller than this, again because here I'm dividing by more than I'm dividing by here. And if you divide by more, you must get less. So that's why this thing is smaller than this thing. And now what am I going to do with that? I'm going to transform the minus root n to the right side. I get root n plus 1 is smaller than root n plus 1 over root n plus 1. And now I'm ready to tackle the inductive step. So I say, finally, this is the sum that I have to consider on the right-hand side of the statement p of n plus 1. That's bigger than root n plus 1 over root n plus 1, because this part is bigger than root n. That's my inductive hypothesis. And that's bigger than root n plus 1 because of what I wrote here. Okay, so I've shown that this is bigger than root n plus 1, and that shows that p of n plus 1 is true. So finally, I, I now have the right to say it follows from the generalized principle of mathematical induction that p of n is true for all n bigger than or equal to 2. That completes the proof.